Hey, this is Ryan Jones with Serverless Guru. In this video, we're going to be continuing the plugin course, and we're going to be covering a plugin called Serverless Plugin Write Environment Variables. So normally with Serverless, you have a environment variable section that you'll pass into um, your Lambda functions, or you can pass them globally uh, into your Lambda functions. The idea with the serverless plugin write environment variables is that it allows you to use the .env uh, library. And so this will actually create a .env file, which I'm sure you're used to if you're coming from a like Node.js Express background. And so normally you don't have to create this when you're using serverless. And then the serverless.yaml will naturally feed those environment variables into your uh, Lambda functions coming from the serverless.yaml file. But I'll show you both ways. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump straight in. So you switch over to your terminal. We're going to do SLS create dash dash template AWS Node.js. Then we're going to give it a pass. And I'm going to use the name of this project for my own organization. I'll give it a slash dash one at the end. Cool. So now that we have this, we can cd into serverless. We have two files like normal. So let's go ahead and open this up in Atom. And we can take a look at setting up the environment variables. So we have our handler.js file like normal. And then we also have a serverless.yaml file. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the serverless.yaml file. We're going to kill these comments. And then once these are gone, we're going to look at passing an environment variable in two different ways. So you have the provider section, which can pass global environment variables. So this can be, uh, these are like your global environment variables. And then you have uh, your functions. So your function, which in our case is called hello. This is the name of our Lambda function. And then this is our handler, which basically tells the Lambda function where to actually run the code from. And then we can actually add local environment variables to this specific function. So if we had multiple functions, each one could have their own individual environment variables, or we could have global environment variables. So what we can do here is we can say um, API ID, say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And because um, you can't pass true or false or numbers, um, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure, uh, environment variables, Node.js. Yeah, so it forces all properties to be of type string. So environment variables must always be strings. Yeah, so that's what I thought. Um, cool. So. Going back over, we have our API key. So this is, this is going to pass this API ID uh, straight into our handler.js uh, file right here. And so then at the top, we can basically say let API ID equal to process.env.api ID. Cool. So, and then inside of this, we can basically say log API ID. And that will take care of showing us that this is all connected and working. So we can pass it in this way, or we can also pass it globally. So we can have a global variable up here that says API ID, take it away from down here, and we can pass it in this way. Um, that way, if you had multiple of these functions, let's say you had another function, this one was called hello1, this is a whole nother function, and so we had another handler.js file. Uh, what that would basically do is um, it would pass this API ID to both of these functions. And then we could actually do something more like this where um, let's say these have two different purposes. So we can change the API ID for hello one and make it you know four, five, six, seven. Um, so it can actually be passed a separate API ID. And so that's how you would normally do it the serverless way. Um, so now that you know that, what we can do instead is let's go ahead and wipe out this hello one 
and we will use the plugin to handle this for us. And it'll create a .env file at the same time. So, uh, so it says, yeah, what is it? Um, it basically writes environment variables out to a file that is compatible with .env. So how do you use it? Easy. You just add the section down here. So with all plugins, we have to have the custom section. So we can jump below here and add custom. And then we can give it a write ENVs. And we'll go ahead and copy the first line there. Write ENVs. And then what we'll do is we'll say API ID. Copy it from down here. There we go. One, two, three, four. And then we'll get rid of this down here. This will uh, this will pass API ID into a .env file, and then our Lambda will pull from the .env file. So this is cool, this is good. Um, now what we need to do is we need to add the plugin section. So we can say plugins, and then we'll copy the name up here. Serverless plugin write environment variables. Now what we need to do is we need to init our project to make it a node uh, node project, and then we're going to npm install uh, the plugin. So it doesn't actually need to have that. So let me rerun this command with save dev because we don't actually need it to be packaged up with the service. So. Now, if you look inside the package.json, we have our dev dependency as serverless plugin write environment variables. And then inside of our serverless file, we have this imported in the plugin section. We have our custom block with write environment variables with our API ID. And then naturally, what should happen is a .env file will be created um, at when it's packaging. And then this will be passed in from a .env file. Uh, so we can put the comment up here that says from .env file, not from serverless.yaml. Cool. So this is coming from a .env file instead of the normal way that I just showed. And let's see, is there any other additional steps? And it says that's all. Fill the variables up with any keys and values you want, and you're good to go. Cool. So let's go ahead and deploy this and let's see what happens. Um, now, if you're sitting there scratching your head, if you weren't already at the beginning, um, I am taking this video from the point that you already have an AWS account set up. You already have your serverless uh, locally set up. And that's why we're able to do the deployment, which we're about to do. If you don't have that already set up, you can go over to www.serverlessguru.com or for sure, sure serverlessguru.com. Same thing and you will come to this website here uh, which is taking a while to load I'm not sure why that is i have a course in here for um, basically going through how to create your first serverless project and also how to set up things like dynamic variables uh, kind of does like serverless commands organizing your product project um, and then gets into like some basic resources like dynamodb what I would say is watch this first video. It's completely free. Um, you just have to create a, an account uh, with it, but you can sign in with uh, Google or Facebook or LinkedIn, whatever you want to use. Um, once you're in, then you can watch this video and the rest of them for free. Uh, this plugins course is going to be another course on the website. So if you're watching it right now, then you can obviously see that there's a, a few different plugins courses already released uh, and there'll be more in the future. This first serverless project will cover AWS account, setting up the CLI, and everything that you need to basically get running with serverless. So check that out. Um, for now, we're going to assume that you have this knowledge, and we're going to go ahead and do a deployment. So we can run SLS deploy dash dash stage dev. We can actually just run dash v. We don't have to run the dash dash stage uh, dev um, because it's, it's assumed. So that's, that's great. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to deploy this and then we're going to switch over to the AWS console. We're going to look at the completed deployment and then go to the Lambda function, uh, this hello function that got created. 
And then inside of the hello function, we're going to create a test and then we're going to run the test uh, and see if the API ID is actually printing out one, two, three, four. And if it is, then that's awesome. We're doing what we're supposed to. Um, and if it's not, then we might've messed up somewhere. So let's check it out. If you switch over to the CloudFormation console and you go to US East North Virginia, you will see update in progress unless yours is faster than mine. So while this is completing, let's go ahead and open up the Lambda console. And open this in a new tab. Cool, so it looks like there's our function. Let's go ahead and switch back and make sure that the deployment's been fully deployed. Update complete. And in our terminal, everything looks good. We get our printout. Now what we can do is create a test event. So if you go to configure test events, call this one, two, three, four. It doesn't it can be called anything you want. We'll hit create. And now what we're gonna do is test it. And so that is our function running. Uh, and as you can see printed out here, it does not say one, two, three, four, it says undefined. So this is interesting. Go ahead and look back and see if there's anything that we missed. We have write environment variables. We have our API ID. We're passing in serverless plugin write environment variables. So one thing we can do is we can look at uh, the Lambda and then we can check see if there's a .env file created there. Um, it doesn't look like there is. Maybe potentially because I'm pulling the stuff in the wrong way. Let me double check. Okay, so this makes sense. We're basically missing the npm install uh, .env, which totally makes sense. Let's go ahead and add this in. So we can go back to the thing and we can install .env. So now that .env is in installed, we can basically grab this require.env.config and we can put this at the top of our handler.js file. And then let's go ahead and redeploy. So we can do SLS deploy dash V. We can actually deploy the function by itself, but uh, for simplicity, we're just deploying the entire thing again. What serverless actually does is it checks against this, so um, this should be okay. And as we can see up here, we can see deleted.env file from the path to our .env file. That shows that the serverless plugin is actually working. Cool, so now if we go back to the Lambda console, we can refresh this. Refresh. Our test is still there, and we can hit test. And there we go. So we're seeing one, two, three, four. Uh, another great thing is that we don't have environment variables that are exposing our keys uh, and our values. But the when it's actually being packaged up and deployed, um, it is actually being passed those values and in the background it has it but for our purposes we don't see it so that is uh yeah that's kind of awesome right pretty beautiful um so this kind of wraps up this video uh, i would say based off seeing this plugin i would probably use this in my own projects a little bit more often um, instead of passing the local environment variables um, you pass them through this write env variables it'll create a dot env file pass it into the function um, but not basically have it sitting out there exposed. So real quick, let's comment this out and let's comment out the plugins and then let's grab this API ID. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass it, let's say environment, we'll pass it like that. And let's confirm that this is how this is for serverless environment variables. What I wanna show is that if we, if we do it in this fashion, will it print out so environment, make sure that's correct, cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna redeploy and what we'll see is that if you pass it this way or if you pass it globally, it will show your value on the Lambda function. And we really don't want that because it's exposing it to anyone who has access to our AWS account. Now obviously in a perfect world, your AWS account is locked down just to the people on your team. Um, but maybe there's even cases where you're trying to have someone look at different parts of your um, 
your Lambda code, uh, and you're not so granular that you only said, hey, they can look at this one function, um, and they kind of look at another function without you knowing, and then now maybe they have some of your API keys or something like that. Um, it's just, it seems like the better method would be um, using this, this serverless plugin to kind of handle this for us. So now we're not gonna test it. We're going to scroll down and you can see there, environment variables, API ID, 1234. So if we rerun this, it'll still work, but as we can see there, 1234, but we're exposing it to the Lambda console and we're also putting ourselves at risk. So now that this is covered, uh, hopefully everyone can kind of see uh, this kind of plugin. It didn't seem like it had that much following. Um, let's see. Yeah, only 29 stars on GitHub, but it definitely serves a real purpose when you're working with uh, serverless projects. So definitely check this out and use it in one of your projects. Uh, if you're following any of the other plugin courses, I think there's a couple things now that um, we've we've seen uh, that really play a big like have a big difference in your serverless projects. Um, everything from like lowering uh, the function size uh, down to something really small, um, and also of course doing this one here. So cool. Um, I will see you next time. This was Ryan Jones, the Serverless Guru. Have a great day.